Hi there, I'm Shane. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the best camera gear and camera settings for getting photos of your dog, or if you're a professional, how to get the most sharp and in-focus images consistently. So this video is going to be focusing on the much more technical aspects of dog or pet photography in general, what my favorite lenses or cameras are in the settings that I recommend. However, I'm not going to be going into posing or techniques I like to use while taking the photos, and I'll save that all for separate videos, which I'll have linked on screen right now. I'm going to break this video up into two main parts though, first talking about the gear, and the second half talking about the settings. And as always, I'll have the actual times of when I'm talking about these subjects marked out in the bottom of the video, so you can skip to whatever section of the video you find most interesting. I'll get right into it though and start off with my recommendation on the best camera to use. And this is going to be a controversial topic because every photographer is going to have a different opinion on the best camera for dog photography, and most of the time it's going to be the camera that they have. And unsurprisingly, the cameras that I recommend are Sony cameras, which are the ones that I use. And I'll get into my reasoning on this. Realistically, any camera with autofocus is going to be able to get a decent photo of a dog. However, there is a new feature that's been coming out on more modern cameras that is the intelligent autofocus systems that are able to focus on pets' eyeballs. Almost every camera manufacturer is rolling this feature out though on their mirrorless cameras, and there's particularly good options out there from Canon, Nikon, and Sony. Though as I said, I recommend Sony because the Sony A6100 is going to be your best value option because it has this feature come standard with it, as well as having the greatest option of lenses that support this feature. So it's not a requirement, however, if you're coming from a DSLR particularly, this is a game-changing feature and is a huge quality of life improvement to have. When it comes to choosing the lens for your photography, it unfortunately still is rather subjective. If you're taking a typical portrait photo though, similar to with humans, using a longer focal length like an 85mm lens or longer if you're on full frame, or a 50mm lens if you're on a crop sensor, will result in the most pleasing level of compression and the most shallow depth of field to get a nice blurry background with your portrait. Where taking photos of dogs is quite a bit different than humans is that dogs tend to move a lot more and seem to follow instructions a little bit less. So if your dog is chill and doesn't move a lot, really, any lens will work. However, if a dog is particularly energetic, there's kind of two strategies I like to take, either using a fast wide angle lens or a telephoto zoom lens. I like to use a wide angle lens when the dog is very personable and is okay if I'm getting close to them because you can get some very interesting perspectives where the dog feels very large in relation to the environment, especially with my dog who's rather small, and you get some very fun and interesting photos. And because a wide angle lens is just inherently going to have more in the photo, it's harder to miss the dog if they're moving quite quickly. However, something to keep in mind is if you do have a human in the photo, to keep them in the center of the frame or just not to put them at the edge of frame because a wide angle lens can introduce some distortion to make them look a little bit wonky. With dogs, this isn't going to be as big of a variable because our eyes aren't going to feel as used to seeing distortion on a dog's face, but with a human, it's rather undesirable. On the complete flip side of this, I like to use a telephoto zoom lens if the dog is rather standoffish or extremely energetic and likes to run a lot like a retriever or something because you can get some very dynamic shots of the dog running through a field or you can get some very classic portrait-like photos from a long distance away with a lens like this. The key thing to keep in mind is that it's going to be harder to actually get photos of the dog just because your field of view is so much more narrow and you're going to need a very large open space in order to get far enough away from the dog to get a photo of them. So it doesn't really work indoors and you're going to be very reliant on how familiar you are with the focal range as well as how well the autofocus performs with the lens. Normally this is the part of the video when discussing portraits that I'd recommend using additional lighting or shaping the light that you have. However, especially with dog photos, I highly recommend against it just because by the time you get a scene set up and everything's ready, the dog would have already moved and lost its attention. And especially when you're using speed lights and strobes, it can just confuse the dog and kind of scare them more than you need to. It probably should be reserved only for professional settings. So 
I'm not saying you shouldn't, but it's just going to be way more complicated than it needs to be. And you should just use natural light when you're first getting started to keep things a little bit more simple. So now that you've decided on your camera and your lens, it's time to move on to controlling your camera settings. I've made previous videos discussing the basics of camera settings, and I'll have that linked on screen now. And I'm going to build upon it in this video, talking about what specifically would be most useful for dog photography. As I emphasized at the start of the video, autofocus is incredibly important for fast moving dogs. And there's a few settings you can optimize to help improve your hit rate. I like to use back button autofocus, which means that you turn off the shutter button so it doesn't do any focusing and you use a button on the back of your camera. This allows you to set a focus point irrelevant of where you're taking the photo. So when you're taking the photo, you can set focus on a certain distance away from you and then take a bunch of photos so that when the dog is at the point you set focus, the dog will be sharp and in that nice position. However, if you want to have continuous focus on, that's also a great option. And you can just hold down the, the button at the back of your camera and take photos irrelevant of where the dog is. And again, it tracks a little bit better that way, I find. However, having eye autofocus basically makes it a joke and improves your hit rate significantly. So it's a huge feature, but those two options of continuous and back button autofocus, in my opinion, are very useful to have turned on as well. The next setting I'm going to recommend changing is shooting in a burst or a fast continuous mode. So you take a lot of photos quickly and using simple logic would dictate the more photos you take would be the more good photos you end up with. However, this is true to a certain extent, but certainly is a double edged sword and isn't always the case. It is certainly beneficial to have more photos, but it's important to be mindful that every photo that you take is one that you're going to have to look through and edit after. So it can just increase your workload and also taking a lot of photos in a single burst can fill up your buffer quite quickly, which means that you can miss out on taking other good photos just because you were too trigger happy in one moment. So while I still do recommend using burst or continuous modes, it's just important to reuse it only when you need to and be very mindful about the compositions that you're taking just because it's very easy to get carried away with taking hundreds of photos on these digital cameras and I fall victim to it myself. Just make sure you're not becoming careless and remain intentional with the photos that you're taking. By far the most important setting to consider though is going to be your shutter speed and it's going to depend on the lens and the camera that, that you're using but overall it's going to have to be relatively fast and you're going to want to start off with at least a shutter speed of 1 over 500 if the dog is moving and the biggest thing I recommend doing is that as you're taking photos review them punch in on them and make sure that they're not blurry it is going to be a matter of trial and error before you get comfortable with your lenses and what the appropriate shutter speed is to use with certain movements. So just always review your photos and dial in your shutter speed as appropriate, but keep it fast. The last topic I'm going to touch upon is your aperture. And this is often going to depend on your personal preference, though a lot of the time people tend to drift towards using shallower depth of fields with fast apertures, because that's often associated with kind of that professional look. Quite honestly, I end up shooting at wide open a lot of the time too, just because I like having a blurry background. However, there is a few situations where it might be a good idea to stop it down a bit. If the dog is moving very quickly, it's a good idea to maybe stop it down like one or two stops just because you'll increase your depth of field and increase the chance that you'll have an in-focus photo. So if you're confident in your autofocus system, by all means, shoot wide open. However, be mindful that it might not always work and you might need to stop down a little bit. And also, if you're taking a very close portrait of the dog, it can look sometimes awkward if you're using too shallow of a depth of field because if their eyes are perfectly in focus but their ears and their nose are blurry, it looks a little bit odd. So often stopping down is kind of wise just to get more of the dog in focus and make the photo look a little bit more visually pleasing. So that's going to be it for this video. The key piece of advice is I want to make sure you're prepared for the shoot. Make sure you know where you're going, what the dog is like, and to have the appropriate gear with to get photos of that dog. Because if they're a very friendly dog and they're going to be close to you a lot of the time, 
you want a wide angle lens and be prepared to get some close portraits of the dog. And if they're a very fast dog or shy, you'll want a zoom lens that's able to get nice photos of them and make sure you're using the appropriate shutter speed and aperture in that situation. So overall, just make sure you're prepared and make sure you're flexible because again, your hit rate is gonna be considerably lower than if you were taking photos of people just because they're moving so quickly and things change so fast. However, if you want some strategies on some techniques I recommend to improve your hit rate and to get more visually pleasing photos, I'll have a link on screen now and in the description of this video to another video I made on that topic if you're interested. Anyways, if you have any questions about anything I said, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to help out. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. It goes a long ways in helping me make more videos like this. And yeah, I really enjoy making them. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.